Hello, I'm Serge Aquos, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Arena video. So, today we're going to be playing some more Brawl. And given that this deck, being a Boros aggro deck, simply named JUSTICE, is uh, a little bit faster than the, the deck that I showed last time, I, I am going to be putting both parts of the, the deck discussion and the gameplay in this single video. Uh, however, I will link below the skip to just get straight right into the gameplay, since I'm sure some people just want to see the games themselves and don't care about the in-depth reasoning for why things are the way they are. So, first and foremost, what's this deck about? As the name says, quite aptly, Justice. Our commander is Aurelia, the exemplar of justice. We are seeking to get justice for the mechanic Mentor that the Boros had that never really saw real constructed play due to the fact that it just wasn't good enough, uh, even though it was pretty fun when playing with it in pre-release. So, Aurelia, first and foremost, the Mentor. Since this is the main effect that the deck is built around, Mentor means that when a creature attacks that has Mentor, it puts a plus one plus one counter on an attacking creature that has less power than it. Aurelia's uh, act well, triggered ability is at the beginning of combat, you choose a creature you, you control, it gets plus two plus oh, and then it gets trampled if it's red, and it gains vigilance if it's white. So it's able to apply a buff, it's able to do it the turn it comes down, so unless the opponent has instant speed removal, you will normally get some value from Aurelia. Uh, and then, with that ability to just apply a plus 2 plus 0 buff, if you have two creatures with Mentor, you can effectively constantly Mentor, since, you know, oh, this one's bigger than that one, so it'll put a counter on it. Well, they're now the same size, I'll put the buff on the other one, it Mentors the other one. So, that's the idea. So, the plan is, is quite simple. We start out early, and get down some decent creatures that we can Mentor up, things like Healer's Hawk, Fencing Ace, uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist, uh, and then, so yeah, Double Strike is, is a mechanic that I've got most of the Double Strike creatures in here. It's It doubles the, the value you get from each plus one plus one counter. You get your first strike damage, you get your regular damage, every counter makes it twice as strong as, as their contemporaries, so it's, it's a good mechanic to, to go for. Uh, we then have some other cheap creatures that have decent effects. So we have Giant Killer, we have Law Rune Enforcer. Both of it are able to tap down things, so we're able to get swings in. We're able to keep our things safe. Uh, and we also are then able to, with Giant Killer, destroy something on top of that. Uh, we have a Shock, which just is able to push through a little bit of extra damage wherever we need it. Whether that's a Planeswalker, whether that's a creature that's blocked us, whether that's an attacking creature we've blocked or just the opponent's face. Sometimes, sometimes that's all you need. So, Goblin Banneret, it's a mentor creature, it's gone in the deck, it's able to buff itself, so it's, it's another decent one for constantly getting mentor triggers, so long as it survives long enough and gets mentored enough early on to not immediately die on the first block, since it doesn't buff its own toughness. Uh, the the Sunhelm Stalwart, has first strike, so it's it's not likely to get too much value from the initial mentors outside of a, a few double strikers. Uh, but when it starts getting mentored itself, the first strike makes it a, a lot harder to then deal with from the opponent. We have Boris Challenger, another a mentor creature that's able to buff itself. It's got a 2-3 body for 2 mana, so it's already pretty decent there. Uh, Swift Blade Vindicator as a, a premium double striker. It, if, if we can get this out of control with, with plus one plus one counters, then yeah, it, it's able to just start shredding through things. Since double strike, so double the damage. Vigilance can be blocked, blocking as well. Trample, so whatever's left over keeps going. So Red Hole Arcanist, as one I mentioned, is in here. It's able to not get that much in the one mana range with only shock, but we should be able to mentor it easily enough. 
and with just one counter, we're able to get access to most of our removal with Chandra's Triumph, Lava Coil, Scorching Dragonfire, Justice Strike. We also have some recursion with Brought Back to bring back permanents that have been destroyed, although probably less useful on the return use with, uh, with Arcanist. They could have killed something before combat, so there are times where I'll be useful there, but it's, it's not the most useful. With, uh, with it, but it is still able to be done quite easily. Uh, then at the three mana range, we get Unbreakable Formation, which is able to give all of our stuff indestructible. Unfortunately, it would be during combat, so it doesn't give the counter or the vigilance, but it does allow us to uh, make it a, a relatively unfavorable attack to get some Menta triggers uh, and then have some pressure applied for the following turn to have everything already bigger from the Menta. Uh, the three mana slots, we've got War Boss, Token Generator, another Mentor, another Mentor, another Mentor. Raging Red Cap, it's a double striker, it's easily mentored. Sky Knight Legionnaire, probably one of the more throwaway cards in here, but the haste can come in relevant, uh, can, can be relevant, and the flying does give it some evasion, so it's not the best in the deck, but it's also a decent enough thing to get out early or late can be a, a finisher, and then is also something that can be mentored easily enough. Prison Realm is uh, more removal. It's able to hit Planeswalkers and get rid of them straight up, as opposed to, to damage, which is where most of our other options are. It gives us Scry, so we can set things up a little bit better. Gideon is able to give Indestructible, Vigilance, or Lifelink, depending on our needs, and eventually is able to exile permanence, whilst also allowing us to apply pressure with, with its own powerful body. Fireborn Knight, it's another double striker. You know how I feel about those. True Fire Captain, another mentor, able to deal damage to opponents whenever it gets dealt damage. So we can get some pretty decent value off of that, even if it, it does die on the immediate block. Conclave Tribunal, it, it's able to remove anything that's not a land. So it's it's worth having as an option. And I do prefer it to than having something specifically for artifacts or enchantments, since, yes, there are definitely artifacts and enchantments I'd want to hit. I don't think I play against them enough to run something that can only get rid of them, since sometimes you don't run into anything. Conclave Tribunal does at least allow us to answer that to some extent, so it is fine. Cosmotronic Wave, Bond of Discipline, both of these essentially let us open up the opponent's board regardless of how stacked it is, and get in a swing, which may be for lethal, or may just be applying the pressure we need to stop the opponent from uh, from stabilizing. Uh, it, it can put them on edge. They may not be able to safely attack in if they're low enough that all we need is to draw a, a, a creature with haste to finish them off or get a shock or something. So there's, uh, there's definitely utility there that we've got going. Uh, I did consider Solar Blaze at one point, uh, in the place of, as I uh, forgot to mention it, Deafening Clarion. Solar Blaze deals, it's just a strike, except it does it to every creature. Uh, we have uh, Deafening Clarion in here in its place, although both could probably run together, because whilst, yes, having some board clears to just wipe out anything that goes wide is good in, in formats like Brawl and Commander, but because of the aggro uh, the, the way this deck is, is meant to just be applying pressure. Even if I don't lose all of my creatures to the Solar Blaze, it puts me back enough that I think it's harder for me to recover from than with Cosmotronic Wave being able to create an opening and clearing out the weaker mass generation. Whereas Deafening Clarion still could kill my creatures, but because I have the choice to also give lifelink, it's not always as dead as Solar Blaze could be. Uh, then, where are we? Outlaw's Merriment is constantly able to produce tokens. The, the Rogue is very easily mentored. The Cleric isn't too hard to mentor. The Warrior can be mentored. Uh, and they're all, at the very least, red and white. So Aurelia's buff does give them both Trample and Vigilance. So we can apply some decent pressure with them. And at the very least, it constantly provides us value if if we end up getting to a situation where we're stalled out. Uh, integrity, 
is a buff that can then give our mentors some more extra power to mentor up something as necessary, or we can have it deal damage and gain us some life, whatever we need in the situation. The flexibility is just pretty handy. God Eternal Aketra. We have a lot of creatures in this deck. A lot of those creatures are pretty cheap. Uh, Aketra has double strike. These are all things that I really, really like, and it produces tokens whenever those creatures get cast. So, very, very good value there. And then also, if it dies, once it hits the battlefield, we can put it back in the library and get it back again. Barging Sergeant. It's another Mentor creature. It's a haste creature. It's probably one of the, the if not the weakest... Actually, I think it's between that and Sun Home Stalwart. Uh, but, yeah, it can come out of nowhere and get us a Mentor trigger. If the opponent's board wiped and left themselves open, we can get in a, a decent hit or two. It's not the best, but it's another thing with Mentor, and I think it is just about playable because of the haste. Response Resurgence. It's more removal, or it's more combat phases. So we can use it for, for finishing off the game or for opening up the board. Whatever we need, however we need it. Also, I've not pulled it off, probably never will pull it off, but really, really want to pull it off is being able to cast Resurgence and in the same turn with a mentored up Dreadhorde Arcanist cast it again to get two additional combat phases on top of the regular one. Light of the Legion is our most expensive creature in this deck. I don't expect to get to six mana often. If we do get to six mana, I think a 5-5 Flying Angel should hopefully be enough to finish off the game. If not, then I'm pro I've probably already lost the game at that point. But, hey, in a singleton format, when I'm trying to make Mentor work, I want to run as many of the Mentor cards as I think is reasonable, and I do think that it is still in the reasonable category, especially since when it dies, it does put a plus one plus one counter on each white creature. So, I can still get some decent value from it, regardless. And then finally, Embercleave. If we've got Mentor active, we've got a creature with Mentor, we've got something worth mentoring, then we already have it down to four mana. If we've got it at four mana, then we're already getting value out of it. And it gives double strike and trample. And everything I said about double strike still applies. And then the trample on top of that is just icing on the cake. It loses some of the impact because of the fact we have things with the double strike, since it's not going to be giving that benefit. And plus one, plus one isn't that much of a boon to something that already has double strike. But it can still trick things out. And as I said, we've got mentors and none of the mentors have double strike. So at the very least, it can go on something with Mentor. That pretty much covers the the, the deck. Uh, lands are, are pretty basic. We've got plains, mountains, uh, one of, of each of the multicolored lands. Cryptic Caves for additional card draw, since we've got very little of it, and we don't need too many lands, so it can either provide us the mana early on, but later on we do expect to burn it. Uh, can also technically bring it back with brought back, since brought back says permanence. And then Khan's Bastion, since we're playing with counters again. So, proliferate just works. Uh, in, in the games, there are uh, Evolving Wilds. The Evolving Wilds has been cut just for a basic mountain in its place. Since I had Cavalier of Flames, Cavalier of Flames once lands in Graveyard to deal additional damage. When Cavalier got cut, I didn't see the need for, for that, since generally speaking, I've not had mana issues. Uh, we're looking at a couple of, of hard mana costs at the 4 mana range. It's not really been an issue, so that's just been how I've left it. Now let's just quickly have a look at the cards that didn't make the cut. Or well, either that or I've considered them but haven't tested them out yet. Uh, so first and foremost, let's go over the mentors that weren't included. So. Blade Instructor and Hammer Dropper are both essentially one and done mentor triggers. They have big bodies, or well, high, big power, low toughness, so they pretty much always only get their one swing. They get their one mentor trigger, and I, I don't think that's quite good enough. Uh, even though some of our other mentors are on the weaker side, because we get the buff from Aurelia, we can get some more mentor triggers, and I want the mentors to, to live to keep mentoring up the other mentors later on and blade instructor and hammer dropper are just a little bit too flimsy to, to keep around 
in in the matches, there is also an Evolving Wilds. Evolving Wilds was put in earlier because there was a Cavalier of the Flame. And I want lands in the graveyard. That's not in the actual build anymore. I took it out literally as soon as I went to discuss this deck uh, the first time. Toughness ones, but I'm, I'm not quite sure I'm 100% happy with it. So, we then have Defiant Strike. It's another way of drawing cards, and card draw in this deck is pretty low, and would effectively be able to give one of our mentor creatures the, the buff to mentor, but it's not really been an issue. So, It, it does have value, could be an option, could make things more consistent potentially, but I'm, I'm not 100% sold on that. Fairy Guide Mother, I think this is just one that I completely overlooked initially and probably will try and get in there somewhere. It's a 1-1 one -one flyer, so it's already something that can be proliferated, e uh, proliferated, mentored easily, and then has the evasion to potentially get in a few more hits as well as being able to give a buff for one turn to a mentor creature to be able to mentor something else and make that bigger, gives it the flying so it's more likely to survive. So I, I think overall Fairy Guide Mother should be in here and I just overlooked it. God's Willing, it's a really good protection card. It allows us to answer whatever plan the opponent has for immediately removing our commander, uh, so long as we wait an extra turn, of course. But Overall, I think the value is worthwhile, and it, it could be something worth considering. I've been rather happy with how the removal's handled so far. So I could potentially reduce how much removal I've got, go for God's Willing, and, and get that little bit of extra pushing power. Shepherd of the Flock is in a, a similar place as, as Guide Mother of, of having a useful adventure side that then also has the body attached. Shepherd is less likely to be mentored as a 3-1, a but the usher to safety to be able to save something at one mana and then produce a body afterwards does have its uses, so was considered that for that. Same same deal with Rimrock Knight. The adventure side is, is relevant, the body side less so, but once again we are quite an aggressive deck, so it may not hurt to have these in there just because even though I may not be able to mentor them, they will be able to pr apply pressure. And if they're spending a turn to block and, and trade with one of these two, then that's just a smaller creature that I can mentor up a bit a bit bigger. Hanged Executioner, I'm, I, I think I just overlooked this as well. I, I don't think I had one when I made the deck and then ended up getting one at, afterwards, maybe. But... Yeah, it, it creates a, a flyer. It's a flyer itself. It's able to remove a creature completely with exile. So, at the very least, it makes two bodies for three mana that can be mentored up. And it's then able to be, serve as removal if necessary. So I do think that's another one that, in fact, I might stick in the place of the, the Sky Knight. Mace of the Valiant. We play a lot of creatures. We have some token generators. It's able to get pretty big and is able to make something really big with Vigilance. The issue is I think it's a bit too slow since we have to take a turn out to play it and then we have to play creatures constantly to get the value up. So I, I think it's it's a bit of a pass in, in that regard. But it, it's a nice card, just not really for this, this deck. Bone Crusher is, is another good adventure card with a, a body attached that just doesn't feel like it fits in the theme a, a bit too much. Like, the others, as three ones, there's still a decent chance of getting them uh, to, to be mentored. At the very least, like, Aurelia, at entry level, is able to, to mentor three ones. I can't say the same for a four three. So it's a lot harder to mentor. I have to mentor something that has already a mentor to be able to then get this mentored. Uh, and the two damage is yeah, the, the damage prevention 
uh, or preventing the prevention of damage is useful as a, a utility effect on top of the two damage, but the two damage itself for two isn't as worthwhile, uh, and I think I'd rather go for the three damage that can't hit players, but it, it is more likely to kill something. Feather, it's a good 3 4 for three mana, uh, but is really a different deck. The only card currently in the build that it cares about is uh, in, uh, in, ah, the split card. I've forgotten the name of it. Integrity Intervention. And only then the integrity side, unless I'm, I'm damaging something of my own to heal. Uh, so it's not exactly the best fit in this deck, as well as being aggressively costed. So you've got to have red, white, white to be able to play it out. So not always the best option. Smothering Tide is a great card that I recommend for most white brawl decks. This deck, however, is going a bit on the faster side, so taking a turn out to then generate mana that I'm then not spending on anything is a bit pointless. Uh, Twin Blade is one that I, I definitely crafted after I, I built the deck. Uh, it's get Stevel Strike if there's uh, more than 25 or more life. Whenever you gain life, you get a counter on it. It can get pretty big. It can punch through for a lot. It could be worthwhile, but once again, I think it's, it's building into a, a different strategy, and... I'm not going to be able to mentor it like the other ones as effectively because the life gain is likely to put the counters on it instead. And if I don't have more than 25 life, then it's it's okay at best. Uh, Solar Blaze, talked about a bit earlier. I believe the main reason I went away from it is I'd rather put in the effects to uh, tap down everything or to prevent blocks so that I can get a, a final hurrah swing and kill the opponent then and there, or gain some life from the from that, to, to essentially apply the pressure, because I think that resetting the board, even though a lot of my creatures would survive the Solar Blaze, the ones that don't are the real powerhouses, and I feel that, yeah, getting in a heavy swing that the opponent can't stop is better than resetting the board and trying to rebuild from there, especially with how little card draw there actually is. Venerated Loxodon, I just completely glossed over, I guess. I forgot it existed for, for a moment, built the deck, and only just now realized that, hang on a second, this is probably a good option. It gets to put counters on things. I can use it on the things that would be mentored, or, or the, sorry, the mentors themselves, so that they can mentor things as well after that. It's, yeah, it, it's probably a, a solid option that can go in, and I just completely forgot about Cavalier of Flame, as I said, was in an earlier build because it's able to give a buff and it's able to give haste. Now, I think I'd probably also consider here uh, Crashing Drawbridge or something else to, to give haste to things to be able to apply more pressure. But I believe the main reason I had it in originally was the idea of, oh, I've not got much card draw. Cavalier can do the card draw. It can give haste. It can deal damage equal to lands and graveyard. There's a good call for Cavalier. And I think the thing that turned me off it in the end is the triple red plus the more aggressive push made it a bit more difficult to actually get out, as well as the fact that we were running out our hand most of the time, so there'd be very few things to discard. So it it wasn't always the best option. And, and once again, really hard to mentor at six power. So I, I just decided to cut it in the end. Uh, and Garrison Sergeant, it has double strike if you have a gate. We're a singleton format. There's a single gate in the deck because we've only got two colors. We've only got, I guess we have two gates as options because we have a gate plaza, gateway plaza. But then I'm spending an additional mana to get that land out just to have a higher chance of being able to play a five mana three three with double strike. That if I don't have the gate is a five mana three three. Not not really worth a cut, if you ask me. So yes, that is is the gist of, of what I was going for. Now, without further ado, let's get into some actual gameplay. So, Nicol Bolas, God Emperor. 
this is a very removal heavy hand. I don't think I particularly want that against a Nickel Polis deck. It's not much better. But, sure, we'll go with it. Well, I've now got the Mana Pool Outlawed Merriment at least. This is. This is way too slow. Well, that, that's probably going to hit my Merriman. Yeah, that's not good. Let's, let's try getting a creature out there. Interesting. Okay, I could go for a Relia and push. Probably trade into it. Hmm. I think I hold off for now. Mountain or Plains better. Let's go. Let's go Plains for Castle Ardenvale. And then again, we've also got Emereth, so. But we've got the two red, we've only got the two white. Uh, do I still tribunal that? Yeah. Yeah, they're. They're a bit off Nickel Builders. They've only got two black at the moment, and no blue, outside of the command power, so. I think I got got time to make this work. Okay, that's black blue. So black blue. Black, black, red. Okay, they can do it now. That's a bit of a problem. But I can also kill it outright. With Aurelia, I think. Yeah, if they kill Fancy Nades from the big I can shock it. Yeah. The next time I think I drop a Ketra. Oh, got blue now, so they've got counter spells up. Oh, or they just go straight for the Chandra. Target player. Always wanted to make a really big fireball. I think I really got to get the ball rolling with a Ketra. Get some value out of creating tokens. Let's get toasty. Make a dragon. Double zombies. Watch this.
Okay, they're digging for, for an answer. Uh, I think their best possible thing that they've got, or could have, uh, is a land and ritual of soot. But even then, I've still got a Ketra and Aurelia around, so I think I can take out both Planeswalkers. Just shock. So in fact, I might even be able to take out Sarkhan without uh, Okay, so they're like doing that. Not being on fire problem. Prime zone. I can just replay it. So that does it that, that buys them a, a little bit, but not enough. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna get on one of those back. It's not that much. Look to the skies. Get a punch in. Take a pick. They're gonna be hurting a lot more than me. Gonna hold that land just in case they've got any discard effects. So give the bus to Aketra. You attack Sarkan. You attack face. Shock. Listen to those we come on. Alright, now I believe they can nickel bolus again, but yeah, they're, they're not in a good spot. Okay, we get a bit of life back, we get 4-4, four, four. we kill one of my 4-4s. Four, What a discipline going. Ah, the devil. The devil hurts a bit. They should have done that first, uh, the other way around, really, so that uh, I mill a Ketra. So. Oh, if I if I get that big enough. Okay. I'll I'll offer them a trade. Just to get it off the board so that Dreadhawk Arcanist is uh, more likely to, to get through. There. Really digging for those answers. That is a good one. Uh, they're gonna go. Okay, I think they might be dead. go. Got them. So despite having a slow hand, we had enough, it seemed. Uh, I think the Aketra was really able to put in work, because even though we did have uh, a pretty late start, that Aketra was just able to get the value from us taking so long to actually start playing out creatures. And they miss it. 
some lots of colours going on today, so yeah, it's acceptable. Get a, a banneret down early. Probably crop the, the temple this turn. Yeah. He's out on two damage, but it means I get the red cap down. Uh hmm. Oh, that could be greedy. I think I'm gonna gonna see if I can get a, a fast land. I do still have two plays I can do, plus I then have the banneret pumping. Okay, that's good. First, do anything. Get red cap down. And then even if they have removal for the banneret, already I can can come in. Yeah, this is this is good. Improve this. Yeah, they to get a fair bit of ramp. Maybe I should get rid of that, but not getting the mentor going. I mean, I can tribunal mid mizzet to go for mid mizzet. In fact, if I do that on Aurelia, hmm. If I draw a land that enters untapped, I can get rid of niv mizzet and then I can uh, triumph the Fey Barrow Elder. So Solar Blaze isn't too bad. It only hits the Banneret at the moment. Most of our stuff has higher toughness and power thanks to, to Double Strike. Uh, Bedevil is awkward. D Spark is a bit awkward. Time Wipe is going to hurt. So I'm definitely going to have to hit the Faber or Alba. There's a land. So. Okay. Tribunal. Actually, that's all that. We don't tap the radio, we tap Banneret. Yeah, because I can get that. So we tap the Banneret because I got the white. So we're getting rid of Nivisit. Burn the Elder. Get another Mega Trigger. And they're down to four. So they need to be able to board wipe pretty much now. Yep, there they go. They can get their time wipe. Command zone. Hmm. So they've got the Bedevil and their D Spark up. So do I wait a turn on a land? Hmm. I think a, a Ketra is definitely going to take a hit. On the Bedevil or the D Spark. Hopefully, the. I mean, they're gonna go for the D Spark. Oh! Or they, they take the honorable way out, I guess. Oh, they've not got double black, so they can't Bedevil it. They could D Spark it though. Ah. Oh well. That was a, a lot of pressure applied by the, that double strike there. I'm, I'm quite happy with how that went out. Third game, let's see if we can go three for three. Ooh. 
Well, that's out of the multifarious. Yeah, that's alright. Get ourselves to Healer's Fork. I'm, I'm really curious how to see this is. I'm, I'm intending to make my own build with Lazar at some point. Because it's... It's a fun card. Uh, I've played... Uh, I think I still prefer the other one for for formats like this, since uh, Lazar uh, Demir Mastermind from... Uh, uh, whichever Return to Ravnica set it was. Um... Yeah, that, that one also gets opponent's graveyard, so it makes mill pretty good. You mill your opponent, get value. It's all, all pretty nice. I've got four lands, so I've got my giant killer active. I'll just keep swinging for one for now. Lazab doesn't have anything to turn into. There's no commander damage. I'm healing for one, so them hitting me for one is just mitigated. But yeah, but this uh, Lazav does have some nice build rounds, since obviously it can turn into anything at will. So the, the obvious things are some cheap creatures with Hexproof and Indestructible, although I don't think there's many with that in there, in those colours, but... Now that looks like a counterspell to me. Not sure about you. Could be a kill spell. Could be both. And I'm not in a hurry. I probably should be, but... Oh, if that was all it was, then I'd been baited hard. Um... I'll, I'll hold on to that for now. Nah, they must... they must have something else. Oh. Now that is a juicier target. Tap out for that. I can get rid of it. Now do they leave it in the graveyard so that lab can turn into it? No. Here's my opening for Aurelia. It could still have removal, but it at least gets turn of value with the healer's hawk. Okay, so they sacrifice Lazab to kill something. Probably Aurelia. Okay then, so they can definitely draw the Kefnet. I'm presuming they're digging for something to answer a Ketra. Could even just be a land, they've already got the removal. from a Ketra. I think I'm going to hold up Intervention for now. Do I save the Healer's Hawk? I think 
think I'm, I'm fine with creating her. Oh no wait, no I'm not, because Lazar can become a copy of it anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, I could have. Okay, I'm gonna do this because next turn, if they don't remove enough things, I have the lethal with Cosmotronic Wave. And I can also. Yep, tap down the Cavalier with Giant Killer. So we were good. There we go. Three for three. Strong set showing, I think. I, I hope you enjoyed the video, and take care. See you next time.